Welcome to Financially Speaking, I'm Sean Letter. Now for many of us, our single greatest asset is not our home or even our pension fund, but rather our ability to earn an income. In this edition of the show, we explore disability cover and the role it plays in your finances. Joining me in studio to take us through the finer points of this topic are Raylan Dunbar, financial advisor at FinLogic, Ryan Chegwooden, an actuary from Ultrisk, and Jeffrey Wiseman, head of financial solutions at Momentum. Before we jump into our discussion though, let's take a look at our viewers' question for this week. The question really is from David Nelspreit, and he asks, I'm a single man without debt. Do I need disability cover? Now, firstly, Rayland and gentlemen, uh, good evening, welcome to the show. Now, when having a look at disability cover, some might argue if I don't have debt and perhaps even dependence, life cover is null and void. But disability needs to be approached slightly differently. Jeffrey, I'd like to hear your thoughts on that one. Sean, I agree with you. Disability is something that can happen to anybody. And if you consider that a person becoming disabled would have to provide for their financial needs during the period of disability, even though you don't have any debt, you would need some form of financial provision to cover the costs of living uh, for the rest of your life. So basically we're looking at it's not just about a liability, or rather the liability sits with generating an income for myself when I perhaps no longer can. Raylan, would you, would you uh, concur with that? Absolutely. Um, disability cover is really universal in terms of its need. Regardless of age, gender, occupation, people need disability cover. As was already mentioned, that you have to be able to replace your income. And obviously the younger a person is, the more disability cover they would need to be able to cover them up until a retirement age, where they've then got the income to actually be able to retire. So re replacing income is very, very important. And that really would lead to two different types of disability benefits. Possibly this gentleman would not be in a situation that he would need capital disability cover, which is effectively a lump sum payout because he doesn't have any debt. Chances are that he better, he's better off rather having an income protection plan, which physically replaces his income in the event that he cannot work due to a sickness, temporary or permanent disability. Okay, now, now, now we, we, we're moving a bit broader now from just pure disability cover and we're going into specifics around somebody's needs. Yes. Um, perhaps f from your point of view, um, is, is really to have a look at it and say, when do I use what? I know, Raylan, I know you gave us some idea of that, but practically speaking, when would I use capital disability? And we'll get on to income just now. Well, capital disability is more appropriate to cover things like debt, um, the cost of changes in lifestyle at the time that the person becomes disabled. Whereas income benefits are far more suitable to replacing the income of the individual over an extended period of time. Um, so that the person will have the benefit right up until they would have planned to have retired and made their retirement provision. Um, disability income benefits can also be used for shorter to duration benefits. Um, so there are, there's a lot of flexibility available in both capital disability and disability income benefits provide for a variety of needs. Okay, so we, we, we've got the liability argument, we've also got something from an income point of view, but you mentioned something else and that was around lifestyle adjustments. How would one go about identifying what those adjustments might be? Well, this typically arises from expenses that are incurred at the time that a person becomes disabled. They might require modification to their house, for example. Um, they might require modification to a car. But there's certain types of changes that will happen in their life um, and disability cover is particularly important uh, to make provision for that. Jeffrey, from your point of view, obviously, if we, if we look traditionally uh, at a lot of the, the life and disability type solutions that have been out there, they've been what have known as, as an accelerated type benefit. So in other words, if I did use my disability for whatever reason, that would impact on my life cover. We've seen quite a dramatic shift in the product space to address that. Could you, could you expand a bit more on standalones? Sean, yes. Uh, standalone benefits have been around probably for the last 10 or 12 years or so. And it extends to disability products. And in that sense, what it means is that the benefits on a life policy stand separately from each other. So if I have a standalone disability benefit and I claim on that benefit, it won't affect any of the other benefits on the policy. In terms of identifying when 
to use what an accelerator benefit which would accelerate the payment of death cover one really needs to look at the risk that you're looking to cover and so if disability uh, happens and you're looking to cover a risk that would arise in the first of death or disability then an accelerator benefit may be suitable but if we go back to the viewers question where we spoke about a single person who had very little debt uh, there a standalone disability benefit may be appropriate because there's no real need for death cover in that instance. So they would be able to, or, or rather should I say, he would be able to take up the option of saying I would like to take disability cover but I'd like to leave perhaps the rest behind. That's exactly right, yes. Okay. You touched on something and Raylan, I'd like to get your thoughts on this. Obviously there's huge benefits in having your disability and life cover separated out but there's certain circumstances where it makes sense, as Jeffrey uh, pointed out, to actually have those together and that's if there's a single knee or there's a single event that either or would, would cover it. I know certainly from a, from, a, from a bond point of view that might be one scenario. Any other scenarios that play out from that point of view? It really is any situation that a capital amount will be covered. As you already mentioned, if somebody for example had a bond and they were concerned that if they passed away or they were in a, an event where they became permanently disabled that their bond could be fully covered. Now the nice thing about that, about an accelerated benefit is that it actually is a much cheaper benefit because there's a cross subsidization happening in the premium between the life cover and the disability benefit. So it works out a lot cheaper and you're also not in a situation where you're effectively over insuring yourself. Now let's say for example that person has to suffer from a disability event and for example a million rand had to be paid out if that was the cover amount. The life cover, if it was a million rand as well, would effectively fall away. But the bond would be settled at the end of that disability event. So therefore, that person doesn't necessarily need more life cover in order to settle another big debt. Obviously, as he moves through his life, if he lives for a longer period of time, chances are that he might still need life cover going forward. Mm. So it's always to be taken into consideration what is the actual circumstances of a client at that point in time and also after an event has actually arisen such as a disability claim what would the, the circumstances be going forward from there. So it's always important to understand the difference between your accelerated and your non-accelerated or standalone benefits and make sure that you're not just using a standalone benefit just to have life cover in place. Because unfortunately that cost can become quite severe and you don't want to be in a position where you're over-insuring in that event and effectively the client could rather be saving that money for retirement or another benefit.